Hi guys, this is WNews.com and I'm here with the ASUS Transformer Book T100G. It's a 2-in-1 device, it's a Windows 8.1 tablet and a laptop. And it's made a laptop using its special dock. More about the keyboard dock a little bit later. This product was announced in January 2015. It was launched in March in some of the countries. And right now it's priced at $400 on Amazon.com. And the $400 price tag includes both the tablet and its keyboard dock. So we're dealing here with a tablet that measures 7.2 millimeters in thickness. It weighs 570 grams. And uh, I have to say it's a bit heavy, it's 133 grams heavier than the iPad Air 2 if you want a comparison. The dock section measures 14 millimeters in thickness and the tablet plus the dock together they weigh 1.08 kilograms. So let's show the dock. Here we go, this is the dock part, the keyboard and as I said the two combined can weigh a bit over 1 kilogram. This tablet right here is long, it's 25 millimeters longer than the iPad Air 2, it has an aluminum design, diamond cut edges, it has a pretty solid feel, it feels a bit like a laptop lid rather than a standalone tablet and it's clearly made of metal but it has a very nice soft touch feel to it. The bezels are pretty big as you can see here but that's not very bad because you can easily grasp the tablet like this. It's a premium build and it connects to the dock via rare metal magnets. It's uh, something like uh, neodymium or some special metal of that sort. You simply do like this and the metal will then come into play and connect the two. The two are not connected via any type of port. It's just purely magnets and two latches that will be used to prop together the devices. This is the laptop mode, so to say, in which the two are connected and uh, it's easy to attach and also easy to detach. It feels like a whole device and not like two devices that are separate and as I said, reasonably easy to detach. Okay, we've done it. Okay, and uh, we go further. I have to say that there is a nice balance here. Um, other devices that combine a tablet and a dock usually tend to have one of the parts be uh, harder than the other, I mean the weight. And uh, some models have a um, heavy tablet and the device is used to topple over and put the keyboard like this. Well, in this case, they're balanced. They both have pretty much the same weight, so there's no toppling over. Okay, so I have to say that this is a premium design and now let's analyze the sides. At the front of the tablet, we got the front camera right here, obviously the screen. But at the back, we have the main camera here, no flash. At the top, you can find the on off button here and a small LED next to it showing you when you're charging the device and other things like that. And um, I have to say that sometimes this button here, the on off button, doesn't exactly respond to my presses. I press it but the screen doesn't come off instantly, which is something I found on other Windows 8.1 devices. At the bottom, you can find the two latching holes that will be used to connect to the keyboard. But on the left side, we got the volume buttons, home button audio jack also serving for the microphone and the micro usb port for charging and pc connectivity these two buttons are pretty comfy to use and we also have a speaker right here on the right side we got the micro sd card slot a micro usb 3.0 port micro hdmi and the other speaker so those are all the sides and the conclusion is that we're dealing with a solid and premium model but I think the screen could be just a bit bigger considering the size of the case. I think that these big bezels could have offered us maybe a 12 inch screen on this bigger body. Um, keep in mind that we got the micro USB side port here that's used for charging. And now let's access the dock, have a look at it and see what the conclusion is. The dock has rubber feet so it stands comfortably on any surface. It has this latching area here that uses very strong magnets to connect to the tablet. It has this QWERTY keyboard that's very comfy to use, excellent feedback from the buttons. We have the touchpad that can be pressed in any area as a normal mouse press. And we have on the side a micro USB port for charging and here a button with three positions, off, on and Bluetooth connectivity, plus two LEDs for the Bluetooth and battery. That's about it, it's reasonably thin, it makes the package whole, it has its own separate battery and uh, that separate battery does not charge the tablet and the tablet does not charge the dock, each one is on their own here. It's made of a pretty solid plastic 
and it has a metal frame that keeps everything together. Overall, once again, solid and premium design. Okay, we proceed further with the hardware. So this tablet offers us a display. This one is a full HD screen with a diagonal of 10.1 inches and the resolution here is 1920 over 1200 pixels. The aspect is 16 to 10 and it's a true vivid screen. It's an IPS with LED backlight. The CPU inside the tablet, well, this one is a quad-core Intel Atom Z3775, clocked at 1.46 GHz. It's of the Bay Trail T kind, and it can be clocked at up to 2.39 GHz. Once again, quad-core Intel Atom Bay Trail T generation. As far as the graphics are concerned, we're getting Intel HD graphics, and other specs include 2 GB of RAM of the DDR3 type, there's also storage here, obviously. We got 3264 or 128 GB of storage plus the micro SD card slot that you saw earlier. There are also available two cameras here. We have a front 2 megapixel shooter and a back 5 megapixel shooter on this model. And the connectivity side offers us Wi Fi, ABGN, Bluetooth 4.0. We got micro USB, micro USB 3.0, micro HDMI. And finally, other specs include microphone and speakers. You can see me here playing with some stats regarding the battery. The battery of the tablet is a 30 watt hour unit. On paper, it should be a 6000 mAh unit on paper. So if we got confused, it's only a bad math. Anyway, 30 watt hour. And again, on paper, it should offer us 10 hours of functioning. In our test that involves Wi-Fi on, brightness at 50% and HD video playback in a loop, we achieved a time of 10 hours. So we started using the tablet, we played back a movie, we started at 3 p.m. and we finished at 1 at night. So 10 hours of HD video playback in a loop. I have to say that this is quite a good performance, but not if you compare this model to the Asus Transformer Book T100TA that scores 12 hours excuse me 12 hours and 40 minutes so this model 10 hours of video playback in a loop and the transformer book t100 ta from asus 12 hours and 40 minutes meanwhile the galaxy tab a from samsung scores 13 hours and 9 minutes so it also beat us still those 10 hours are good enough especially considering that this tablet it's not meant for video consumption but rather for productivity and speaking of productivity you should be able to get about one day of office work out of it, maybe one day and a half. In principle, if you're working a 9 to 5 job, 8 hours of solid usage are guaranteed by this model. The charging takes 3 hours and 14 minutes and we beat the predecessor, so to say. That one was the Asus T100 TA, it needed 5 hours to charge, this one only 3 hours and almost a quarter. In the meantime, uh, the iPad Air 1 and the iPad Air 2 require between 3 and 4 hours, so I'd say we're fine at 3 hours and 14 minutes. Um, there are power settings in the desktop mode, so let's go to them. Select the battery here, adjust screen brightness, change plan settings, and you can tweak your timeout and plan brightness. And then there are the advanced power settings that you can play with, plugged in, power buttons and lead, desktop background settings and all that stuff you can also use on your laptops and PCs. Overall an ok battery, especially for work. For video you have other alternatives out there. The dock charging takes 2 hours and a half and you should be able to use it a day or even 2 of work or even more if you're using it every once in a while. Now it's time to uh, analyze the acoustic aspect of this model. As I said it has two speakers, one speaker here on this side and one on this side, dual speakers with Sonic Master technology that's typical of ASUS and its devices. Okay, so let's go to the player and listen to some tunes. Starting with this one.
Okay, and now the conclusions, the sound is crisp, clear, we got good bass, I would say very good bass, good volume, the tablet is pretty loud and it doesn't vibrate at maximum volume, sadly no equalizer which is something we already got used to. Okay, so we also did a test here and there and uh, let's see what uh, values came out. So let's go to the pictures, screenshots and here you can see our decibel meter test and we achieved 83.2 decibels which means we were below the Samsung Galaxy Tab A 9.7 that we tested recently that one scored 87.6 decibels and we also scored below the iPad Air 2 but only by about 3 decibels which is not something major still this tablet is loud it doesn't have any vibrations and it can easily support an office party if you're planning to listen to some tunes at the office now let's check out the screen once again this is a full HD IPS display with a 16 to 10 aspect through vivid technology and reduced reflections according to ASUS as you can see some glare exists but it's not a very bad glare we also have 178 degree wide viewing angles and the LED backlight I kept mentioning big bezels are here not very bad because there's a lot of room to grip the tablet and once again it still has a bit of glare which is more visible in the sunlight not in the spotlight reflection other than that we have RGB stripe pixels and I guess it's time to have a click test in order to check out the colors of this screen so let's try and close down this app if possible sometimes it doesn't exactly respond to my gestures okay here we go go into this folder and playing this test clip okay so RGB stripe pixels as I said the colors are okay I mean realistic the image is crisp and bright we got a good level of detail and obviously wide viewing angles as you can see for yourself and as you can also see for yourself this tablet is a bit of a fingerprint magnet but if you wipe it properly you see that they're gone and they won't appear very fast the conclusion is realistic colors crisp and bright and good details but the brightness could be a bit higher why do I say that well I say that because I have proof and once again trying to close it up and let's see what's happening here okay so let's check out the brightness this time pictures screenshots and the lux level should be here somewhere here we go we use the lux meter to test the brightness of the screen we achieved 281 lux units we compare this to the predecessor the asus t100 ta that one had 187 lux so we beat that also the iPad Air 2 has two, 354 lux, not a very huge difference and uh, once again this screen could be a little bit brighter but just a little bit. Meanwhile the Samsung Galaxy Tab A tested recently by us has 432 lux so at least 300 or 350 would have been just a bit better than 281. There's also a special app to play with the screen. As you can see sometimes the swipes work sometimes they don't maybe because of the sweaty hands and all that. And as I said before, a special app to tweak the screen, it's called Splendid Utility. It's basically the ASUS Splendid that you had on Android. It has special modes like normal, eye care that makes everything yellowish and less aggressively white, vivid and manual with a color temperature slider to play with. So that's pretty much the customization you're going to get here. Okay, so enough about the screen, you get the idea, overall a good display for work and a bit for play, but it could be just slightly bit more bright. At the front we got a 2 megapixel camera, at the back a 5 megapixel shooter, and let's actually check that out. So we got this little thingy right here, and this is the camera UI, very simple and minimalistic, if you've seen uh, Windows 8.1 interface before, we got the video capture button, photo capture button, panorama button, and two more options here, we got timer and exposure plus the front camera shortcut, this is the exposure slider and this is the timer options, and there is no pinch to zoom, as you can see, there is an attempt at touch focus, not very much of a thing here, and if you take a photo and then tap it, you will be able to choose various versions of it, it's a bit like um, sort of a back in time capture or better said the best photo and you keep the one you want and that's pretty much it in a nutshell and uh, let's take another shot and let's actually zoom it in to see if we got quality or not here I would say that the color looks pretty decent 
the image gets grainy fast, but this tablet is reasonably well spec when it comes to the camera. Since it's a business model, you won't be using the camera too much, but if you have to use it, at least you're getting a decent camera. As far as the temperature is concerned, I'm going to resort to my old folder again. Pictures, screenshots, and this is a thermometer, a special thermometer that we used. We played the game Riptide GP2 for about 15 minutes and we achieved a temperature of 36.8 degrees Celsius, which is okay and the tablet does not suffer from overheating. As far as the web browser is concerned, Internet Explorer is used here and let's load up tabletnews.com. Here we go, tabletnews.com, load it up pretty fast, the browser is comfy to use, pinch to zoom works like a charm and the virtual keyboard is also well spaced, a pretty generous virtual keyboard we got here. We even have a special option for emojis and even more of them related to food, traveling and all that. And uh, that's it, browsing wise. It's time for the benchmarks folks and again the folder saves us. Ok, so you're probably wondering which models I used to compare to the current Qi device you're seeing on the screen, the T100G. Where obviously I compared it to the predecessor, since this is the T100G, I compared it to the T100TA from ASUS from last year. Let's start off with the 3D Mark and let's see what the results are. We tried out Ice Storm, Ice Storm Extreme, they were maxed out, and finally, in the Ice Storm Unlimited test, we got a score of 16,698 points. We beat the predecessor, the T100TA, by about uh, 6,000 points. Meanwhile, we also beat the iPad Air 1 by about 4,000 points, but the iPad Air 2 beat us by about 5,000 points. We also did a GFX test. Here we go. And in the T-Rex off-screen 1080p test, we scored 23.76 frames per second, while the predecessor, the T100TA, had 14 frames per second, the iPad Air 1 19 frames per second, so we beat it, and the iPad Air 2 58.6 frames per second, so it totally beat us. Then we tried out the this test here, but these results are also included in this one, the famous PC benchmark that has four big tests for disk test, CPU, RAM and GPU. So let's take them one by one. In the disk test, in the linear test, we had the 71 mega per second write speed and 160 read speed. The predecessor, well, that one had 43 and 142 mega per second, so we beat it in both aspects. In the CPU test, we scored 44.38 mega per second in the single thread test and 159 in the multi-thread test. In this one, the predecessor scored 34 and 132, so we beat it again. In the RAM test, a bit of a surprise, we scored 638 mega per second in the RAM test in PC benchmark, while the T100TA had better RAM, apparently, since it scored 700 mega per second. In the GPU area, speed ops, GPU compute, 702, the predecessor 633, so we beat it here, but not by a huge margin. This is a relative benchmark and its results were relative, so to say. First of all, it displays a wrong resolution, it's uh, 1371 over 857, while the real resolution is Full HD. Our score is average, 1892, the predecessor had 2101. Then we did a speed test or two. As you can see the delay was big, we redid it and the delay remained big but it was a bit smaller this time. Download speed 21 mega per second, upload 18 mega per second, it's in the normal limits, it's pretty good I have to say for this tablet and the T100TA had 16 mega per second download so that's an evolution. In browser mark, a pretty low score for Internet Explorer, that's a good browser, 1143 on this model while on the predecessor 2737 on the iPad Air 2 3594 and the iPad Air 1 3563. Next up we got Sun Spider and in Sun Spider we had a pretty good score. The score is 378, the lower the better. The T100 TA had 415 so we beat it. The iPad Air 2 had 294 so it beat us and the iPad Air 1 had 426 so we beat it. Overall I would have to say that this model is clearly superior to the predecessor, the T100 TA 
in most aspects maybe aside from the battery it beats its screen it beats its cpu and gpu and sometimes it even beats the ipad air 1 in some of the tests i would have to say that the device has no lag but uh, that would be a bit of a lie sometimes it lags i have to admit it and the only times it lags is when you try to open a folder from scratch obviously right now that problem doesn't happen but sometimes that double tap isn't enough to open a folder and you have to wait some milliseconds that may bother some people overall it's typical windows 8 lag nothing out of the ordinary if i can say that but games well, when it comes to games anything you can find in the windows store is yours you can run it there are no problems here i've played dungeon hunter 5 i've played age of empires and i've played riptide gp2 without problems you can use tilt you can use touch you can use whatever you want even a controller and you can enjoy a nice gaming experience. Graphics look swell, nice lighting, nice water effects, and crisp graphics. A pretty immersive experience. You can instantly feel you're on a higher end tablet, not your average mid ranger with a MediaTek processor. Well, this one has an Intel, and in spite of not having a professional GPU for gaming, the water looks spectacular. Okay, so far so good. That was the gaming uh, bite size example. And now it's time to talk about the software. It's Windows 8.1 and I'm certainly not going to bore you with all of its details. After all, next month it's time from window for Windows 10. Should be coming to this model as well. What's Windows 8? We got a desktop mode with folders x86 applications. We got the usual swipe motions that sometimes don't work. We got a more complex search thing so if you look for a band you'll see a lot of detailed stuff and uh, stuff from your email and things are arranged like this thanks to bing anyway we got this feature that allows you to swipe to your app list and once again you will close an app by swiping down and in some apps you'll trigger a menu by swiping up that's the basic idea and of course you can snap applications one next to the other like this if you want to of course you can open up more and Q apps and anyway that was a bit of a taste of multitasking okay now it's time to get back to the keyboard and talk about it this is the keyboard this is how you activate it you swipe so to say that button now it's on and once the keyboard is on you don't necessarily have to connect the two they're connected via Bluetooth they don't need a physical connection as you can see I'm using the uh, mouse right now I just clicked it and now I can move around easily with the mouse by keeping it pressed anyway that's the idea they're connected via Bluetooth the connection was pretty fast one thing I have to object here is the fact that this uh, keyboard enters sleep mode really fast loses the pairing and it's a bit of a bother to get it connected other than that the connection is fast once you slide that button in everything works fine and um, let's actually open up a document and see how it handles that there was a bit of a glitch with our office experience so we had to resort to open office and the open office writer is here so let's open it up write something on the keyboard just to see how it handles it obviously you can play with excel powerpoint and word but once again our unit have a bit of a glitch and let's change the font size make it much bigger something like 20 and start writing okay so okay so we wrote this here only two mistakes considering all the spotlight and all the nervousness of a review i would say we're doing quite fine at first i thought that this format was cramped I have used netbooks before but this is actually better than a netbook and I'm the user of an ASUS laptop frankly speaking this is actually better spaced and has better feedback than that low-end mid-range laptop I keep using it's a present for a relative long story short comfy keyboard good feedback from the keys maybe a bit on the noisy side but I've heard noisier so that's good I like the feedback a lot here and I like the fact that you can use this trackpad and press on it once and then it can work like a mouse button press you also have this so-called mouse button here anyway you can do your job easily 
with this model if you're planning to do something on the go, edit a document, play with an Excel sheet or do a quick PowerPoint editing. So keep in mind the keyboard is very nice, as usual ASUS has evolved this keyboard into a new and better one with each generation. And now we proceed to the pre-installed apps list, don't expect anything fantastic here. We got ASUS LiveCam, from what I understood, a bunch of filters and special options and grills for taking shots. Then we got ASUS Photo Director, it's for editing, framing, collaging and putting text bubbles in your shots. And then we've got the ASUS PowerDirector Mobile. This one is made for video editing. It has options related to your background music, title, options related to the style, which are basically filters and other production thingies that you can use here. Then we got ASUS Web Storage that should offer you about 100 gigabytes in the cloud. And we got Calculator Calendar, the whole suite. And we also have the Xenio Reader, TripAdvisor, there's Twitter here, there's the weather app with its usual interface and I have to say there's not much bloatware on board so that's a good thing. Two last things I want to mention, it's an app called Line, I'm guessing it's a social networking app, didn't fill in the blanks. Anyway, it's bundled, at least with our unit, and we also have uh, the McAfee antivirus, I don't fancy it very much, it's a bit of a bother. It always asks me stuff about how to protect me better. I'm a bit of a Kaspersky fan and bit defender anyway. You get McAfee bundled with it. It's good to have an antivirus, but maybe not this one. Okay, so it's time for the verdict. This is the ASUS Transformer Book T100 Qi, the successor of the T100 TA that we tested last year. It's clearly an evolution. It feels like a laptop lid. It has a premium design and on the pro side, we obviously have the low price only 400 bucks for this combo, I would say it's a bargain, premium design obviously on the pro side, an excellent keyboard that's very comfy and has an excellent feedback from the buttons, pretty good battery, these 10 hours of video playback are not a landmark because it's a productivity device not a playback device, ok acoustics from its two speakers and um, it's a great backup for office PC when you're traveling light. The screen is ok, although it could be brighter, I would have to say I'm happy with its colors, color reproduction, of course you won't be doing photo editing on the go, but its color reproduction is quite good. On the con side, those random bugs, the one I've seen on so many tablets, you press this button here and it doesn't always respond as you wish, some of the swipes are not interpreted as you'd wish from the sides, and other usual bugs from Windows 8. Anyway, the keyboard takes uh, some time to pair on and pair off, and sometimes it goes to sleep without telling you and Windows 8 is obviously a pain Windows 8.1 with its huge 1 hour or 2 hour updates especially if you have to work and you cannot because of the updates it's bothersome and of course McAfee is annoying and the screen has a bit of glare those are the cons and now let's give it some grades I'm going to go ahead and give it a 9.3 out of 10 for design because there's nothing to object here I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 for hardware and an 8 out of 10 for software because you know Windows 8.1 is not the smartest P in the pod. With Windows 10 the grade would have been higher so let's maybe wait for that. So 9.3, 9 and 8, the final grade is 8.76 out of 10 here at tablenews.com. This is a business device, it's sort of a vacation business device. People will take this on a holiday as their laptop replacement, not their PC replacement, you heard it well. They won't take the laptop with them, they will take this little thingy with them. It's $400 and it's excellent as a second, second PC. A laptop replacement, it's also a tablet. It's a lesser tablet than an Android or iOS model, but it's a better laptop replacement than those ones. And we give it an 8.76 out of 10 at tablenews.com. Bye bye.